Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus where medicine makes perfect sense. Another day, another microbiology video with lots of animated pictured mnemonics, what we call pickmonics. This is part 11 in the series. Please try to watch all of them in order. You'll find these videos organized in two playlists. One is called microbiology, the other is called pickmonic. In video number one, we talked about these gram positive organisms. And in video number two, we talked about these. Video number three, we started talking about the cocci instead of the rods. Video four was also gram-positive cocci. In video number five, we talked about anthrax, tuberculosis, and leprosy. In video number six, we started talking about the gram-negatives. And we've been discussing those gram-negatives until this point. Today, also gram-negatives. We'll talk about Shigella and the enterohemorrhagic E. coli because it has a Shiga-like toxin. We'll talk about hemolytic uremic syndrome with the famous triad of acute microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. We'll also talk about the two Yersinia species that you need to know about. Yersinia enterocolitica, the red color for bloody diarrhea, and Yersinia pestis, the black death, aka the bubonic plague. What does microbiology mean? Ology means the study of, bio means life, micro means small. It's the study of small life. Microbes are bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. And that's why the field of microbiology is sub-branched into bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology and parasitology. We use gram stain to differentiate between gram positive bacteria, those who stain purple, and gram negative bacteria, those who stain pink. The gram positive bacteria could be cocci, spherical, or rods, shaped like a rod. The gram negatives are also cocci or rods. The gram positive cocci are divided into catalase positive and catalase negative. The gram positive rods are divided into spore forming and non-spore forming. In video number one, we talked about the non-spore forming gram positive rods. And in video number two, we talked about the spore forming anaerobic gram positive rods, the famous clostridia or clostridioides. In video number three, we talked about the catalase positive gram positive cocci, i.e. the staphs. And in video number four, we talked about the streptococci. Video number five was anthrax, bacillus cereus, TB, and leprosy. Do you remember the two types of leprosy? Let me know the answer in the comments. We're done with gram positives. Let's talk about gram negatives, cocci and rods. The cocci are two subtypes, diplococci, double coccus, and coccobacilli, something in between a coccus and a bacillus. As for the gram negative rods, we have the bacilli and the curved rods. Diplo Cocci included Neisseria gonorrhea, Neisseria meningitidis, Moraxella cateralis. Between these two Neisseria, only the meningitidis with an M ferments maltose with an M. How about the Coccobacilli? Haemophilus influenzae, the Bordetella pertussis, Pastorella brucella francisella. Let me give you a hint. On your exam, if it ends in Ella, the odds are it's more likely to be gram negative. So if you have to pick pick gram negative. But by the way, there are exceptions to this rule. There are bacteria that ends in Ella and are gram positive. Next, gram negative rods, the bacilli and the curved rods. Bacilli include Legionella and the curved rods is H. pylori. What is it about McConkie agar? McConkie agar is a medium that helps you differentiate between bacteria that ferment lactose, by ferment I mean metabolize lactose, and they will appear as pink colonies. And those bacteria that cannot ferment lactose and they will appear as white colonies. So with the gram-negative rods, the bacilli, we ask ourselves, can you ferment lactose? How do you ask this question? On the McConkie agar, if yes, I can ferment lactose, I will appear pink on McConkie. Then the next question is slow fermenter or fast fermenter? But if I cannot, I will appear as white colony on McConkie. The next question is, are you oxidase positive, i.e., do you possess the enzyme oxidase? If the answer is yes, this could be pseudomonas. But if you do not possess oxidase, then you could be one of four. 
The first two produce H2S on TSI agar. The second two do not produce H2S, hydrogen sulfide, on TSI, triple sugar iron agar. In the last video, we talked about Salmonella and Proteus. They do produce hydrogen sulfide. But today we'll talk about Shigella and Yersinia, which do not produce hydrogen sulfide. Please don't forget that hydrogen sulfide has a horrible smell, like rotten eggs. All of this was nice and dandy, but you can take it to the next level by downloading this lovely poster, classifying these bacteria for you. You can do it right now at Picmonic. The link is in the description box. Today we'll talk about Shigella, we'll talk about EHEC, hemolytic uremic syndrome, Yersinia enterocolitica, and your Senior pestis. My dearest Picmonic, take it from here. Shigella, the Shigello, is a gram-negative bacteria, the gram-negative devil, that is a bacilli represented by the rod. This gram-negative bacilli can be differentiated from other gram-negative bacilli because it is a non-lactose fermenting organism, shown by the nun, who represents non, holding the lactose milk carton with ferns. Shigella causes growth of white colonies on McConkey agar, the white monkey with the petri dish. It is also oxidase negative, the wilting ox daisy, and does not produce hydrogen sulfide, the nun holding an H-shaped sulfur match. In the United States, shigellosis is a prevalent cause of GI disease. It predominantly affects children and is often spread in areas with crowded conditions and possible poor hygiene, such as daycare centers, illustrated by the daycare kids with toys. Shigella has a high virulence, with as few as 10 to 100 organisms capable of causing disease and this high virulence is represented by a drop of toxin changing the water. Once in the intestines, Shigella is taken up into the cells and replicates intracellularly, shown bursting through the cell. Shigella moves to adjacent cells via an actin rocket, represented literally, that propels the organism from cell to cell. This mucosal invasion causes damage to the GI tract and results in bloody diarrhea, the red toilets. In addition, Shigella produces shigatoxin, illustrated as she jello with a toxic green glow, which inhibits the 60S ribosomal subunit, shown by she jello biting into the 60S ribosome. The toxin can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, which is characterized by the HUS hemolyzing U-rainbow anemone. This syndrome consists of hemolytic anemia, the hemolyzing RBCs, coming from the anemone, thrombocytopenia, the trombone side toe peanut, and kidney failure, the damaged kidney. So let's review Shigella. This is a gram-negative bacilli, which is non-lactose fermenting, and grows as white colonies on McConkey agar. Additionally, Shigella is oxidase negative and does not produce hydrogen sulfide. This is often contracted from daycare centers, and this bacteria has a high virulence, easily causing symptoms in patients. Once ingested, it replicates intracellularly and is motile with actin rockets. Patients can develop bloody diarrhea, and it's important to know that Shigella produces shigatoxin. This toxin inhibits the 60S ribosomal subunit and can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. This syndrome is comprised of a constellation of findings, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and kidney failure. Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, or EHEC, shown as the hemorrhage hammer and E. coli, is a major cause of foodborne illness in the United States and is commonly acquired via ingestion of contaminated foods. The specific serotype of E. coli that causes enterohemorrhagic effects is O157H7, shown literally as the O157H7 text. A unique property of this bacterium, setting it apart from other E. coli strains, is that it is non-sorbitol fermenting, shown as the non-sorbet ferns. A common source of infection is raw or undercooked beef, particularly hamburger meat visualized as the hamburger. This strain of E. coli produces two varieties of shiga-like toxin, one of which is identical to the toxin released by shigella, illustrated as she jello in the mirror. This other toxin varies slightly in its chemical structure but maintains the same mechanism of action. EHEC is a gram-negative bacterium, represented by the gram cracker negative devil. Its virulence feature was gained through lysogeny, represented by the lasso genes, the toxin catalytically inactivates the 60S ribosomal subunit of eukaryotic cells, shown by the 60S ribosome being hammered. In addition to causing bloody diarrhea, illustrated by the red toilet, EHEC can also cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, 
the humalizing U rainbow anemone. HUS can cause potentially fatal multi-system disease with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, the hemolyzing RBCs from the anemone, along with acute renal failure, the kidney, and thrombocytopenia, shown by the trombone side-toe peanut. So let's recap EHEC, or enterohemorrhagic E. coli. This particular strain is called O157H7, and it is a non-sorbital fermenting E. coli strain. It is often found in contaminated and undercooked hamburger meat. It produces a sugar-like toxin, and it is a gram-negative bacterium. The ability to produce this toxin was gained through lysogeny, and the toxin works by inactivating the 60S ribosomal subunit. Patients infected by EHEC display bloody diarrhea and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Other aspects of hemolytic uremic syndrome include hemolytic anemia, acute renal failure, and thrombocytopenia. We talked about hemolytic uremic syndrome in a previous video in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. Remember, it's a triad, but this triad happens to whom? To a child who ate undercooked beef in a hamburger, for example, and developed bloody diarrhea, plus the triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with schistocytes, thrombocytopenia, low platelet count, and acute renal failure, which means azotemia, elevated serum level of blood urea nitrogen and creatinine. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, is shown as the hemolysing U-rainbow anemone in this pygmonic. It occurs primarily in young children, seen as the children, and is typically preceded by an acute diarrheal illness, the acute angle toilet. E. coli releases shiga-like toxin into the circulation, leading to endothelial damage, seen as the inner layer being damaged. This leads to platelet activation and aggregation, and gives rise to the classic triad seen with HUS. This triad is comprised of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, the microscope angel with hemolysing RBCs on the anemone, thrombocytopenia, the trombone side toe peanut, and renal failure, the dead kidney. And they are all connected by the triangle. Lab values and microscopic evaluation in HUS shows schistocytes, or helmet cells, shown as the helmet cell, and increased LDH, the lady's disc hockey. Treatment for HUS includes dialysis for an increased BUN, the dial machine, and supportive care, the supportive IV bags. So to recap, HUS happens in young children mainly and is usually preceded by an acute diarrheal illness. Toxins lead to endothelial damage, causing platelet activation and aggregation, causing the classic triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. Labs show helmet cells and increased LDH, and treatment consists of dialysis and supportive care. Yersinia enterocolitica, shown in this pygmonic as the ear scientist with the intestine castle, is a gram-negative bacterium, the gram-cracker-negative devil, which is a bacillus, the rod. Yersinia enterocolitica is non-lactose fermenting, shown as the nun-milk carton ferns, and is also non-hydrogen sulfide producing, the nun-H sulfur match. Additionally, this bacterium is oxidase negative, depicted by the wilting ox daisy. Now, Yersinia enterocolitica is often acquired through children at daycare centers, the daycare kids with toys, along with ingestion of undercooked pork, shown as the pig, raw milk, the cow udders, and contact with pet or puppy feces, the dog poop. Yersinia enterocolitica infections often present with abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea, the red toilet. These organisms multiply in mesenteric lymph nodes and can lead to mesenteric adenitis, shown by the mesentery adenites or granulomatous microabscesses in the mesenteric lymph nodes, portrayed by the granny llama with the abscess guy and llama eating a lymph lime. Involvement of regional lymphatics can mimic acute appendicitis, called pseudoappendicitis, illustrated by the mime with the appendicitis pen. There have been reports of past infectious complications of Reiter's disease, also called reactive arthritis, shown by Reiter King Arthur with inflamed joints. So as a quick recap, Yersinia enterocolitica is a gram-negative bacillus, which is non-lactose fermenting, non-hydrogen sulfide producing, and oxidase negative. It is spread at daycare centers through ingestion of undercooked pork, ingestion of raw milk, and exposure to puppy feces. Patients develop bloody diarrhea, mesenteric adenitis, along with granulomatous microabscesses in mesenteric lymph nodes. 
Sometimes, infection with this bacteria can mimic appendicitis, and this is called pseudoappendicitis. Post-infectious manifestations include Reiter syndrome or reactive arthritis. Yersinia pestis is a bacterium named after its discovering bacteriologist, Alexander Yersin, and in this picmonic, we show Yersinia pestis as the ear scientist pests with the plague doctor mask. Ear science pests, Yersinia pestis. This is a gram-negative bacteria portrayed by the graham cracker negative devil and is a bacillus shown with the rod. Additionally, Yersinia pestis is oxidase negative, the oxidase negative, and is non-lactose fermenting, illustrated as the nun with the milk fern. This organism is widely believed to be the cause of the bubonic plague, which caused many deaths in Europe in the 1300s. Today, the reservoir for this organism includes several species of rodents, including prairie dogs, portrayed literally, and this disease is transmitted via fleas, pictured literally as fleas. Pathogenesis of this bacterium includes several factors, including a polysaccharide capsule, the polysac capsule, VW antigen, the VW car with an ant gem, and F1 antigen, the F1 Formula One car. This antigen has antiphagocytic properties, giving this bacteria the ability to inhibit macrophages, depicted as the inhibiting chains on the MacMen. Nowadays, rodents that serve as reservoirs for this bacteria are found in the southwest region of the United States, illustrated by the southwest scenery and cacti. Moving on to the signs and symptoms of infection, Yersinia pestis is known to proliferate inside lymph nodes causing lymphadenopathy, the lymph lime ad, and when this organism is in the lungs, it can lead to severe pneumonia, nude mona. If it gets into the bloodstream, it can cause destruction of blood vessels resulting in black cutaneous hemorrhagic lesions on the skin, shown literally with black skin lesions. Many historians believe these lesions gave rise to the name Black Death. Another consequence of lymphatic infiltration is the development of buboes, illustrated by the blue bow in the groin region. Finally, you should know that diagnosis of Yersinia pestis is made with bipolar guillem sustaining, the pole with gems. So when you boil down the facts, Yersinia pestis, or the black plague, is a gram-negative bacillus, which is oxidase-negative and non-lactose fermenting. The common reservoir is prairie dogs, which then transmit the bacteria through a flea vector. These bacteria have a polysaccharide capsule, VW antigen, along with F1 antigen, which inhibits macrophages. And don't forget that a common area where this disease can still be contracted is in the southwest region of the United States. Signs and symptoms of infection include lymphadenopathy, pneumonia, black cutaneous hemorrhagic lesions, and buboes. Finally, you should know that diagnosis of Yersinia pestis is made with bipolar guillem sustaining. At Picmonic, you can watch the video in an educational format or in the funnier story format. You can even quiz yourself like these three questions. Please pause and try to answer them yourself. Now, please take a moment to write the correct answers in the comment section. Picmonic will allow you to browse their library of 1400 plus Picmonics by your favorite book. Just recently, they have added the 2023 First Aid for Step 1 book. So, for example, you can go to Picmonic and say, I want to study the topics on page 253 on my First Aid book, and you'll find the Picmonics that are relevant to that page. This is just doozy. Every day, every morning, you have a quiz that you should take. And this is my step-by-step -step methodology of how I use these Picmonics to achieve maximum retention. You can try it for free. You can enjoy these Picmonics on a desktop computer or in an app. Their ratings on the App Store are amazing. When you use your eyes and your ears, when you story tell, when you read, when you use spaced repetition, when you quiz yourself, you are invincible. So let's compare among these three organisms that we studied today. All of these three are gram-negative rods, and I'm talking about the Shigella, Yersinia intercolitica, and Yersinia pestis. Shigella will give me bloody diarrhea, and don't forget the hemolytic uremic syndrome with the famous triad. Diagnosis, gram sinin culture, don't forget lactose non-fermenter. Management, supportive care, antibiotics for the bloody diarrhea, such as quinolones and azithromycin. However, if it's a hemolytic uremic syndrome, we do not give antibiotics. Instead, just supportive care. Next, Yersinia enterocolitica. It's the Yersinia that causes the bloody diarrhea. It might trigger a reactive arthritis with the famous triad. Can't see, can't pee, can't bend my knee. 
or climb a tree. How can I manage this? Coin alone and TMP SMX. How about the plague? Well, depending on the type, I can get pneumonia, I can get fever, I can get black hemorrhagic cutaneous lesions, I can get buboes, I can get lymphadenopathy. How can I treat the plague? Streptomycin, doxycycline, gentamice. This is an aminoglycoside, this is a tetracycline, and this is another aminoglycoside. Let's review. Shigella is a gram-negative rod, non-lactose fermenter, which means white color on McConkey. Oxidase negative. When it comes to Shigella, everything is no. Are you gram-positive? No, I'm not. Do you ferment lactose? No, I do not. Are you oxidase positive? No, I'm not. Do you produce hydrogen sulfide? No, I do not. Don't forget the bloody diarrhea in a daycare center. It's a high virulence organism and it replicates inside the cell, inside this house, and utilizing actin rockets. Signs and symptoms, bloody diarrhea. The toxin is called the Shiga toxin, which inhibits the 60S ribosomal subunit. Don't forget the classic triad of hemolytic uremic syndrome, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. Next is an E. coli bacteria called E. hec, enterohemorrhagic, bloody diarrhea, E. coli, also known as O157H7, contaminated undercooked hamburger, Shiga-like toxin. That's why we're looking at Shiga in a mirror, because it's not the Shiga toxin, it's a Shiga-like toxin. Who produces the Shiga toxin? Of course, Shigella. E. coli is a gram-negative rod, as you know, also cause bloody diarrhea and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Speaking of hemolytic uremic syndrome, the patient is usually a child, under cooked contaminated meat and acute bloody diarrhea. Do not forget the triad. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with helmet cell or schistocytes, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. Hence the need for supportive care and in severe cases, dialysis. As with any hemolytic anemia, lactate dehydrogenase is elevated because it comes out of the dead red blood cells after we destroy them in hemolysis. Next, Yersinia enterocolitica is a gram-negative rod, non-lactose fermenter, oxidase-negative, does not produce H2S. Risk factors being in a daycare center, eating undercooked pork, or drinking raw unpasteurized milk, or being exposed to the pet or puppy feces. Symptoms include bloody diarrhea, here's the bloody toilet, mesenteric adenitis, granulomatous microapsis in the mesenteric lymph nodes, can mimic a case of appendicitis, and this Yersinia enterocolitica can activate a reactive arthritis with the famous triad, can C, can't P, can't climb a tree. Last one, Yersinia pestis, the plague. Gram-negative bacillus, and just like the other Yersinia, it is oxidase negative and non-lactose fermenter. Risk factors, prairie dogs and fleas. Virulence factors, the polysaccharide capsule, the VW antigen, and the F1 antigen, which inhibits the macrophage. Symptoms include lymphadenopathy, pneumonia, black cutaneous hemorrhagic lesions, hence the Black Death, and we diagnose it by the game sustain. More than 1800 picmonics are waiting for you. Can you finish them twice? Even after finishing medical school, I still use picmonics to this day. They have all kinds of bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and that's just microbiology. They also have picmonics for anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, even biostatistics, genetics, pharmacology, and OBGYN. Whether you are in medical school, nursing school, studying to become a physician assistant, etc., Picmonic has a solution for you. You can download the app right now. Use the link in the description box to try Picmonic for free. And if you decide to subscribe, they will give you a discount if you use my code. Thank you lovely people for watching and thanks Picmonic for sponsoring this video. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.